hey, what, what's up? It's 2020. New goals, new mission, um, new motivations. Yeah, I'm gonna start doing this again. Um, I'm feeling really, really excited about documenting myself again uh, for a few reasons. The first being uh, accountability, which is always one of the main reasons of doing this. Uh, the second, uh, for you guys, I know there's a lot of you who like to watch these videos, uh, and I've been feeling uh, extremely bad about uh, the lack of and just sort of disappearing. And then, thirdly, um, for the creativity of it all. Um, I want to get back to editing a little bit more. Um, I want to have some fun. I want to. I want an excuse to to be filming again, uh, filming everything, and just sort of slapping it all together and seeing what sticks. Uh, for anyone who's watched the videos or just been keeping up to date with me on social media, um, I've officially started a new business, uh, Fat Rocket Studios, which is rad. Uh, I'm really excited. I'm also really nervous and really scared, but I've done it. And uh, oh, it's, it's created a lot of change and it's created a lot more focus. So last year, for the majority of my year, for those of you, uh, you know, most of my regular um, viewers, I lost my job. Um, I tried to make a go at illustration. Uh, it was sort of working and it sort of wasn't. Uh, so I was taking odd jobs here and there. I started working at the comic shop. I was working for 7-Eleven for a stint. I was looking for jobs left, right and centre to try and just get some uh, financial stability and having no luck. I was wasting so much time creating portfolios and design briefs for companies that uh, just weren't hiring, hiring me. And I was falling in, uh, in and out of um, depression and like just insane amounts of stress. Uh, so I bit the bullet uh, and went on to you know, government assistance and then that led into me doing uh, a business course which is how I started my own business uh, and there here I am. So I've been kind of given this, not a free pass, uh, I've been gifted this opportunity uh, to focus for the next 9 to 12 months uh, with financial support from the government to really make a go at my business. And that's what I plan to do. So everything I do in every single waking minute of the day now is me just focusing on being an artist, finding work uh, yeah, as a freelance artist, and also building up my own work uh, and building up a, a, an audience uh, and trying to find people who like the stuff that I'm creating. Uh, I've really opened myself up to a plethora of um, possibilities. I've met several people over the past few months that have really opened me up to another world of whom I'm very thankful and they're not just people that I've met but people I uh, am considering you know, friends now, uh, you know, people I chat to on a regular basis and uh, they're, they've opened my eyes to a world of art that I, I knew existed but had never really dipped my toes in. Uh, something I'd always had an interest in uh, and played around with in those areas of uh, yeah, like street art, graffiti. When I look back, always been one to never really take risks and always sort of go the safe route. Uh, and I'm finding that uh, not only with these new discoveries, but also with my business, um, it's given me these opportunities to be a bit more risk taker, to have a bit more fun. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do. So um, I'm finding myself researching more uh, into the world of art, the world of street art, you know, discovering uh, artists like Banksy, uh, which is one that, you know, everyone knows about, but I've never really spent the time to, to really divulge, you know, what he was about and the work that he's done, why he does it, etc. Um, discovered just recently the artist uh, Lister, Anthony Lister, an Australian artist who just did all the, you know, did this hard work, uh, put it all in, put him, all of himself into his, you know, his artwork. Uh, and persevered and made a living out of it and made himself, uh, you know, a very, very successful artist uh, and to this day continues to just to make art and live off of his artwork. Uh, and, you know, and, uh, there's always the, the notion of these are anomalies. These are people who have just, you know, accidentally um, 
fallen into the right hole and have made it. Um, but I thought it's, the more I look into these people, the more I look into this world is these aren't just people who have just made it. There's never a, it's never just luck on their side. It's these are people who have worked their fucking ass off um, and have made you know their their mission in their life, their goal to to make the thing that they love the the absolute um, their absolute destiny, and they spend all of their time. Uh, you know, focused and dedicated to it. So I'm finding myself doing that uh, more and more every day, and experimenting a lot more and spending more time trying new things. You know, I've been so uh, bent into the digital realm of art that I never s- spent much time working with you know traditional mediums again. You know, I still do a bit of pencil ink, but I'm finding myself now uh, playing with paint more. Um, wanting to do larger scale works, wanting to do, wanting to paint, and the the biggest restriction for me is space uh, and tools and utensils. And I'm finding myself in this really weird spiral of I uh, don't have a lot of money at the moment, uh, so starting my business with no no capital, no money going in. Um, I'm trying to um, use all of the resources that I've built up over the years, which isn't a lot. Uh, it's enough to to play with. Um, but I want to, I really want to just go out and buy a ton of canvases, buy myself an easel, buy myself all the paint that I need and just create um, and just see what comes out of it. Um, but there's so many risks involved in that financially um, that it's holding me back. And the main, uh, the main risk is that I don't have a lot of money to spend at the moment. I need to try and find the work. So I'm trying to find a nice balance between experimentation with what I have um, and creating money with what I've got uh, and which are skills and also coming into uh, the new year the Christmas period very very rough time for a freelance artist uh, most of the most of that um, work has already dried up so um, it was really really tough slogging for the past few weeks so now that things are sort of getting back on board I feel like January is my time to, to really get refresh uh, next weekend I have my first market which would be cool. Um, it's like a little charity market for a, a kid's uh, early learning centre, um, but it's community-based. It'll give me an opportunity to um, show people that I exist in the world and uh, showcase myself and meet new people as well, hopefully network and you know, pass my business card along, meet people, take their cards and hopefully network. I'm finding myself spending more time um, talking to people and having discussions um, and just showing people that I exist so uh, you know as a just as a little project like hey I'm here I love what you're doing hopefully you love what I'm doing and hopefully in the future maybe we can work on something cool together um, yeah so I know this is a I always do these long winded car car videos so these vlogs are probably going to be pretty long um, but yeah that's where I'm where I'm at uh, I'm going to be doing I'm doing so much art at home um, I'm going to make the most conscious effort I can to ensure that I'm actually filming you know, what I'm doing, the process and shopping that all together so hopefully it'll be a lot less talking and some really cool montage stuff of what I'm doing um, and just showing you guys some of the practices some of the stencils that I've been playing around with all the different materials that I'm messing with um, but it'll be cool so hopefully something to look forward to um, yeah It's Monday, beginning of the week. It's been a pretty chill day. Um, stressful though. It's this is sort of like their first official day back uh, for the week, uh, or for the year. Uh, not only for me, but for the majority of most businesses, unless it's retail. Uh, so like all of the factories and everything are going back. So I'm trying to prepare myself now and get in touch with a whole bunch of people. I've been setting up a, a, an email that I can send out as like a cold call for new clients, uh, I'm doing the 
I've got a mentorship at the moment for my business and I've sent that off to them and hopefully they'll come back with some feedback and let me know whether it was good, whether it sucked, um, any changes I need to make. So in the meantime, I'm just currently uh, looking for companies that I can email. Uh, I've just sent, uh, a, some of you might have, have received it, but I just sent out a huge newsletter, uh, which is the first newsletter for Fat Rocket Studios, uh, and that's going to be an ongoing thing as well. So I set it up in MailChimp with templates and everything, it's all cool. Currently, at this point, uh, starting to edit uh, the new video, so I'm trying to do everything properly this time. Um, working back in Premiere Pro, doing proper videos, editing nicely. Um, I do miss the iMac so, so bad, and I'm really hoping that I can build this business up enough that I can afford to invest in one of those this year um, because I know that'll just streamline my whole process a lot easier but I'm, I feel like uh, using this little camera uh, and just working with what I've got here things should be okay so exciting I don't know I'm very excited about this year I just need this year to kick off a little bit better in the next couple of weeks uh, I've got my first market on Sunday, so hopefully that'll see me bring some cash in and I can put that back into the company as well as pay off some bills for the family. Um, just so much going on um, and really, really pushing to try and get some work, get my name out there. Uh, I've just applied for another little festival which is happening next month, so that's another way I can get my name out there and meet some new people, introduce myself. Um, I don't even have business cards yet, so I'm actually thinking of um, printing my own business cards. Uh, this week, uh, just using some stencils and rollers, and then just handing them out that way. I think that might be a cool way to start things off, um, and save a little bit of cash as well. I also want to do some original art. I did some original art the other day uh, here. Um, this is just me messing around, but I feel like this could be. Yeah, these are the little 15 by 15s. Uh, you might have seen some other stuff I've done on uh, Instagram, <coughs> um, and these are just me messing around. Um, but I feel like people might be interested in these if I put a little bit more time and effort in these or just like messing around ones I really love this one. I love I love the vibrant reds This is actually um, some old tattoo ink that I used, but the red is just so beautiful um, a little Fat rocket there So hopefully uh, I'll do a few of those uh, in my days off and that'll hopefully generate some sales too. I was thinking of getting some frames so I've got, this is the, the print that I was talking about here, uh, and I've got like a really cool frame. This frame was only like $4 uh, from Kmart. Uh, it's got a mounting board, and then I just stuck the stuck the, the print in there. So I've got a few of these, you know, maybe I could maybe I could frame them, take them to this little show this weekend and see what happens, sell them like $15, $20 each. Who knows? Um, there's a lot of stuff I need to do. Um, and are just continuing to do, uh, just to, to really build this business up, build me up, um, so yeah. So this is like the state of Australia at the moment. This is my backyard. I don't think you guys have seen my new backyard. So it is slightly raining, but you can probably see, especially like over there, you should be able to see like houses and everything over there. But um, all of this surrounding the houses is just smoke from all the fires in Australia. And I know there's a lot of you in, uh, in the US and such who watch these videos. So I just wanted to show you guys sort of the reality we're here. It just stinks out here of smoke. Like, it's like sitting around a campfire. It's just that pungent. Um, I've been staying inside for the most part for a long, um, for pretty much the last few days, unless I really have to go out um, because of my asthma too. The, this weather sucks. It's just been destroying my lungs. Um, and a lot of people I know are really struggling to breathe. Um, you know, pets have been affected and stuff, it sucks, so 
Um, yeah, that's sort of where we're at. Currently working on uh, the newsletter, just because, well, it needs to be done, and uh, it's the beginning of the year, so I'm trying to drum up a bit of work. Um, so what I've done is I've just added in like everyone from the original, uh, everyone from the original newsletter, which was Chris McMillan Art, is now being added into the new Fat Rocket Studios one. So I've made sure to not be like that dodgy guy, and I've added in like, hey, this is why you're receiving these emails. And also, like, doing the whole adding merch and just being that guy. Like, you know, feel, trying to feel like a business, man. Um, yeah. Looks right. I'm going to send it out and uh, using MailChimp so I can, like, track links and stuff. Also, I'm using uh, my... Uh, I was gifted a GoPro by my dad. Um, I think he had it, like, years ago. And I, for some reason, just never used it. I've decided that this is what I'm now going to use to do all my vlogging with because I can cut it around, it's super lightweight and I've got like little trinkets and stuff so I can like set it up and you know do a little bit more footage etc. Um, yeah, so hopefully more vlogs because of this little guy and not having to use my phone because it keeps running out of space. So it's Tuesday, I'm on my way to the comic shop, um, I'm testing out the camera in the car just to see how it films. Uh, the, the beauty of these little cameras is that they've got the like a, a slew of little attachments so I can just throw uh, any of these little attachments on and just connect it to whatever so at the moment I've got this uh, cool little clip on attachment uh, which clips onto the dash of my car um, and then I can just film like this so now I don't have to worry about that really janky little uh, I don't know you can probably see it I'm not sure um, <laughs> little tripod thing that I had connected to my rear view mirror um, it's a little bit safer because it's like almost directly in front of me so while I'm driving you guys can be a little bit less concerned about me doing these videos um, and it's nice and like again like I said yesterday it's nice and easy and compact so I can travel it anywhere so um, don't know why I didn't think of using this so so much earlier uh, props to my dad um, he's always been there to sort of help me out and support me with doing this sort of stuff and the reason he gave me this camera was so that I could do my vlogs again um, and hopefully it makes him happy to see that I am uh, using them and making the most of um, most of these tools that you know, he's provided uh, for me so um, yeah actually just worth like a huge shout out to my dad um, for being probably my biggest supporter ever uh, with everything that I do and pushing me and um, guiding me and helping me with any questions that I have like especially with the whole you know like starting a business he's been really helpful with etc um, so you know really really thankful to have um, have parents uh, that are so supportive so it's, it's been a few weeks since I've been in the comic shop so I finished up in uh, just before Christmas so the, the, uh, New Year's Eve Eve was the last day that I worked and things get pretty quiet uh, over the new year period so uh, I haven't had to work which sucks because it means that like I wasn't earning any any extra money so things have been a little bit tight at home um, I did manage to sort of subsidize it with a few other gigs uh, I did my first Dungeons and Dragons DMing session um, like as a paid gig uh, which went really 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 well and uh, did a couple of uh, just little odd um, illustration jobs uh, nothing huge but just enough to sort of keep us floating by um, but now I'm really in the hustle like I really want to get into um, a really really good spot where I'm just inundated with work so I can you know survive I, I kind of I'm at a stage now where I feel like I need to try and get into a feasting period of just taking on as much work as I possibly can whether it means working late nights etc because um, I know that these are going to happen regularly where so things are just going to get a little bit quiet I'm kind of living this weird delusion at the moment where uh, like as an artist I feel like as long as I keep pushing and trying to do this and getting myself out there and experimenting that uh, somehow someone's going to notice me and I'm going to sort of blow up at some stage and um, that's sort of going to be that, that pivotal point where thinking about you know, trying to find work etc is not going to have to not going to be an issue um, and I, I know it's quite delusional I mean it's a it's definitely a little goal that I have in the back of my brain not something that I'm aiming for 
completely, but the idea that um, eventually I'll do something that will just hit the mark with uh, someone or a group of people or something, um, a collector or whatever, uh, and it'll just blow up from there. I, I, surely I'm not the only one who thinks that you know there's just going to be that that one thing that's going to absolutely explode and then everyone uh, everything beyond that point is just going to flow and just be a lot easier um, I, I suppose kind of like when you're hunting for a job and just doing it rough um, whilst you're looking for work and then you find you finally get that that break you get the job and then everything just becomes easy and relaxing and you don't have to worry too much about where the money's coming from you know you just show up do what you have to do and then you know you get paid for it uh, I suppose as an artist there's a, a level of that uh, a need for that uh, because the hunt is so uh, so important looking for work and it's not easy um, it's not easy just trying to get people to want to hire you um, but on top of that for me is my small anxieties of um, reaching out to people and annoying people and making the wrong impression um, but I suppose it's kind of like any form of marketing you know uh, one of the things I need to do so after this market once I get a bit uh, cash I'm going to be getting some postcards uh, put it put together and I'm just going to walk around the street and put the postcards in people's letterboxes uh, and then just hope something happens uh, from what I understand statistically uh, it's like one in a hundred or something like that I think it's even more um, yeah, of you know, your response rate for any of that sort of junk. <coughs> I'm hoping that being uh, an illustrator or graphic artist, that by promoting myself through a more traditional means to a wider audience, like the, the actual public, um, via snail mail, you know, letter drops. Um, so I've really got to focus on the target audience and hope that uh, in what I'm sending out is going to be worthwhile to me and to them. So I could target small businesses, so business owners uh, who might be in need of some new branding, etc. Or I can target families who might be on the lookout for a gift, a unique gift. Uh, so depending on which way I go, um, I really have to think carefully about how I'm going to put together that, that postcard because um, I don't want to waste my money. Um, and like let's face it if I'm doing snail mail I'm targeting families so probably doing the like the custom portraits and illustrations might be a better go um, but small businesses will generate more income uh, by doing logo branding business cards etc so it's a uh, I've got to figure out you know which way I'm going with this I think at the beginning of the year especially with Valentine's Day coming up that offering custom portraits, especially with the Simpsons stuff that I've been doing lately, I think that might be a really good way to go to actually say, hey, do you want to get your your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend, uh, your partner drawn as a Simpsons character, or do you want me to draw a particular photo of you as Simpsons characters? I suppose the hardest part about uh, so the business that I'm running, so you know, Fat Rocket Studios, is uh, my target audience isn't just one particular audience it's not like I'm selling to it's not like I'm trying to sell medication to seniors between the ages of 60 and 70 uh, the the audience is far far wider so if I'm going for a business it could be um, a business owner between the ages of say 25 and 45 or 50 um, or even up to 60 you know, someone might be starting their own business their, their dream business as they retire um, Whereas with the portraits, I want to target families. Um, whereas with the Fat Rocket merch, so the um, the drawings of, say, Skullboy, etc., they target teens. Teens who are into um, yeah, alternative music and um, sports, like skateboarding, etc. So there's a lot of target markets that I need to... Um, so there's a lot of target markets that I need to be advertising towards and trying to mix it all together into one little bag, uh, especially with the website. I find that's been the most difficult thing for me in the website is trying to make it appealing to uh, multiple audiences. Uh, I definitely see that I will, based on the work that I've got on there and the way that it's set up, that it's going to definitely target more younger people. So anywhere between uh, 
the ages of 20 to 40, uh, you know, sort of the younger spectrum of adults, I suppose. Uh, so yeah, like me, I'm in my 30s now. It's, I, I think, I think as time progresses and more clients come through, I can do a little bit more analysis as well and figure out who I am, uh, who's really hiring me, who's actually interested in the stuff that I'm doing, and how uh, how to better target them and how to better um, design my business around around that audience as well. Um, there's definitely going to be a lot of growth and a lot of changes over over this year, I think. Uh, but for the most part, I really want to try and point my fingers in a few different directions and just see what happens. I think the markets will be really interesting and I'm hoping that I can do a bit of a uh, sort of surveying. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing a, uh, a mailing list, getting people to sign up to my mailing list whilst I uh, am doing the, doing the, the little markets. Uh, but if I can try and manage or at least uh, try and guesstimate uh, when I'm talking to people, sort of what type of, so what um, gender, what um, age bracket, um, attitudes, uh, spending habits, etc. people have when they're at the markets, uh, I think that'll really help me gauge a, a better understanding of what people want to purchase from me um, when I'm doing these shows, or shows, markets, etc. Um, but I'm going to have to be really, really diligent to make that happen and try and figure out um, where my audience is lying. Uh, and how, how, how best to grow this. Uh, is it worth just doing, like I love doing commission work, I love doing um, work for people. I also love just doing work for myself and just exploring and having fun. Um, so I could go either way. I've just got to figure out, and I've advertised both and figure out which one's gonna be, you know, the more, um, the, best, the best way to, to travel. I mean, I'd be happy to just do all the merchandise and build up some really, really cool designs and then take on the occasional commission here and there. Um, but ultimately, I'd love to be able to just doing cool, cool designs, um, especially like through Tee Public. Tee Public's been really awesome at the moment with helping me out, getting everything set up. Um, if I could generate that store into something really profitable and generating an income through that, I mean, that'd be rad. But no, yeah, I've got to just got to trial and see what happens. It's Wednesday. No? Yeah, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Uh, firstly, I was going to do some recording yesterday because um, there was a sticker where I was uh, in, uh, in, in a town, in Beaky, uh, that I'd put there a few weeks ago and it was still there and I was pumped that it was still there. It was like half hanging off but it was still there. So I was going to try and film it and then realise that the camera was dead. So I realized what happened is, so like I said, I'm using this little GoPro. I had the screen on the back. Now, as long as that screen was attached, like my battery was just getting drained. So uh, as handy as the screen was, I've ditched the screen and hopefully this footage that I get now will not be too, too bad um, filming wise. So I, I thought I had to have it because of the case, but I managed to like fix the case. This is like the cool little case that you get and you just... Um, I can just connect that into my car and the little tripods and stuff. So, cool. So today, uh, the first thing I'm doing this morning is a whole lot of cold calling. Uh, so uh, as part of my business, uh, business my, as my business plan, I need to cold call uh, and you know gain some clients, get prospective clients. So at the moment, this is what my cold call looks like. It's not a lot. There's about 16 emails there. But what I found was... Uh, so I live in the Casey Cardinia region, which you can see here, uh, which is so the city of Casey. I live in Cranbourne. Uh, there's an entire listing of uh, all the businesses. Well, not all the businesses, but businesses that have registered with uh, the Casey Cardinia region. And these are all just the different categories. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going through and creating a massive cold call list from these. Because uh, I figured if I'm going to start, I want to start locally. And work with local businesses uh, within my region and around Australia. So there's like a lot of newspapers. Uh, so the Star News Group, who deal with not only Case Cardinia but also like say Geelong and Noosa and um, other regions. And I can't remember Yarra Valley, etc. So I want to reach out to them and just whether I get the work or not is not. I mean, it's I would like the work, but I want to just let them know that I exist and that Fat Rocket Studios exists and that. 
I'm an artist and once I've sent the email out, just my generic cold call, in a month's time I'm going to reach out to them again and say, hey, reached out to you a month ago, just want to follow up, uh, if there's any work that I might be able to help you out with or contribute with uh, your project, etc. Um, I'm still available, etc, etc. So that's my goal. So today I, I my aim is to get 100 minimum emails for different businesses. And one of the toughest things about sitting in a studio, and I'm sure there's other artists who will attest to this, one of the hardest things about sitting in a studio and sitting behind a phone or a computer all day is you kind of forget how many industries and how many businesses are out there in the world. And that was always one of my blind sides is who am I and why do I even matter to anyone? Um, you know, there's not enough businesses who would want to hire me. It's completely incorrect. There's hundreds upon thousands of businesses who could potentially want to hire me, I need to make the effort and do the hunting work, uh, which is going to be my <laughs> entire day today, to find these companies and then reach out to them. So fingers crossed. Um, we'll see how we go.